This episode of The Ginger Engine is sponsored by the Thomas the Tank Engine Man documentary. Watch Nick Jones's amazing BBC documentary which was first aired in 1995 about the Reverend Wilbert Audrey and the Thomas the Tank Engine series. The documentary is out on limited release and copies are selling out quickly. I should know, I just got one myself. To purchase a DVD, Blu-ray or on-demand copy, please go to www quanta films that's q u a n t a films all one word dot co dot uk there are also two charming mugs quoting the reverend w audrey himself however these are very limited so they will sell out fast thank you to quanta films and nick jones in particular for being our very first sponsor i really do appreciate it hope you enjoy the show <laughs> Hi Andrew, nice to speak to you. And, well, um, Mike, it is an absolute honour like, uh, to speak to you. This is this is literally like one of my childhood dreams to get to speak to people that were involved in a show that was that was basically like uh, what the biggest part of my life. Like, uh, so up front, like I was when I was young, I didn't have a lot of confidence. I didn't have a lot of friends, like, and I was always mm. felt quite alone and like, uh, kind of isolated. Like, and the Thomas show itself was was something that gave me a lot of joy in like really dark times for me. Like, and especially the music as well, because I love music. Like, I love to sing and like, uh, perform and things like that as well. Yeah. So like, just having that as part of my, uh, like, as my childhood was was brilliant. And to speak to someone that helped create it, it's an absolute privilege. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on. I didn't know how successful, well, none of us knew how successful it was going to be, but um, yeah, it yeah. really did uh, take on a whole new meaning for so many kids, you know, and even mm. still now, you know, I, I get emails and tweets mm. from uh, from lots of people who still absolutely love it, and they're, they're yeah. not five-year-olds yeah. anymore, they're, they're knocking on a bit. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah, well, nothing on as me, but, you know. <laughs> oh, in fairness, like, I'm 35, like, and that, like, uh, the second I found out you were doing the... the remastering of the collections of the series i was like bye 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 well so much so that um well i've got twin four-year-old boys and when i take them so i bought two copies i bought a copy for myself to keep nice and a copy for the boys because i knew they would destroy it because they're yeah. kids. well yeah. so anytime we take them to nursery and we ask them what they want to listen to on the way to nursery it's always a uh, daddy's thomas that's fantastic but, but, yeah so they're always listening to that like a uh, well, all, well it's to the point it's only like a five minute kind of journey to the nursery so when they get past like the first cd when they get past stepney they're like who's that again and i'm like that's harvey's music what i need to be i was like i need to re-educate you my boys like come on <laughs> but, but it's like really? what yeah so uh, as usual what i normally do is like you know my kids are essentially lab rats what so i put them what in put on you know the all engines go reboot to see what they thought of it yeah. Uh, as well, well and just filmed it you know for market research well, cool. and well it kept their attention and they enjoyed it but I, but afterwards they were straight back to wanting like daddy's thomas as yeah. well yeah well, with, with all the good music and all the with all the good stuff i was like that's my boys yeah <laughs> they've obviously got good taste well, they, well, they learn for the best what can i say yeah absolutely uh, so uh so mike like, i feel i feel weird calling you mike i feel like i should call you mr o'doro because it is such a privilege i'm just like no, i want to no, do no, like no, that no, and no. tap my hat please, like, uh, please don't do that mike's great mike all right well mike what i like to do to start off the show is to get my guests to tell us their origin story so that's the one thing we all have in common we all have an origins so mike for my followers please okay, well, tell um, us your origin story i was uh born in the early 50s <clears throat> in liverpool and um so I grew up there in the 60s, which was a fantastic time and place to yeah. be in the 60s with all... Yeah, the, the height of Beatlemania. Wow. <laughs> and everyone had a band, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You were either into football or you had bands. Some were both, but it was uh, <laughs> mainly the bands. Because in those days, there were so many clubs you could play at. And um, uh, all like now, it, well, it all changed in the 70s, I suppose, with the beginning of discos. And... Um, Mm. You know, a lot of the live bands kind of fell apart, but in those days, in the mid '60s, it was phenomenal. It was great. So many gigs to do, yeah. and yeah. Um, so we. Uh, I carried on with that until uh, about 1969, and I decided to move to London with my band. 
because that's where oh, all the record right. companies were and all the rest of it was there. Yeah. And um, as soon as we moved down and shared a flat together, we split up, couldn't stand each other. So that was the end of that. <laughs> and, uh, but I loved London. It was great. I mean, it was, that was then the new music scene. Liverpool had kind of lost it by then. Mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, yeah, that's where I kind of started off my professional music career. And um, and it went right on until well, I'm still here, really, still yeah. knocking these albums out. But Thomas yeah. was the big break for me. That was 84, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And um, I got to know about it through Ringo. And um, as he was doing the narration. And uh, I called yeah. Britt Allcroft up and said, have you got the music sorted yet? And she said, no, but we're pitching it out to some, you know, composers. So I said, well, do you mind if I pitch an idea with And she said, no, great, more the merrier. Yeah. And um, so I, uh, I, I already knew Junior Campbell at the time. We were working together on various other things. And I said to him, not knowing how big it was going to be, I said, you fancy getting involved in this? And he said, oh, I feel like, hey, you yeah, agree. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Yeah. So, oh, not uh, at all, not at all. <laughs> we uh, we um, came up with three ideas, I think it was. Um, one of them became the Thomas theme, as you know. Yep. And the other two were, I think it was Edward and Toby. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, they were like the demos. They were three demos. Yeah. And, uh, so when we actually got to work on the series, we thought, well, we're not wasting, we don't waste music. It's, it's so easy to dump something. So we... We, we rejuvenated Toby and Edward to be what they became, which was their theme. So that was yeah, it. that's absolutely amazing. What uh, and I'll, what I find really fascinating is that it was it was through Ringo that you heard about Thomas. It wasn't through like you know like like Brett to start with. It was through Ringo. Were you really like close with kind of the guys from the Beatles at the time? Well, I was. My wife worked for the Beatles in the NEM phase, you know, way, way back. She actually worked for Brian Epstein. Then she went on to work for all four of them. And then when they split up, she kind of uh, went towards working for Ringo. So we were living at Sittenhurst Park at the time, which was John Lennon's old place, but Ringo was yeah. there. And uh, at that time, actually, I was working in Savile Row in the uh, Apple Recording Studio. And um, wow. well, because I loved studio, so that was that was me. And yeah. uh, so then, uh, what happened was, um, we were both obviously living at Chittenhurst, and Ringo said, rather than commuting to Apple, because Apple was falling apart then, mm. he said, Do You want to come and work for me running the studio? So I said, Great, love to. So I ran his studio at Chittenhurst, wow, and um, that became Starfling Studios, and uh, and that's how I found out about the Thomas stuff. Because uh, he'd gone to the interview, he'd gone to the interview <laughs> to do the narration, and um, yeah, and he told me about it, and I said, "Great, I'll, I'll, I'd love to get involved." So he gave yeah. me the number. Are you, still, are you still in contact with Ringo, or are you part of? Were you well, on his tour or anything? No, 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 no. He's moved out to America now. He lives in Los Angeles, so we don't yeah. see that much. You usually see him once a year or something when he comes over, and we'll have a yeah, and that's yeah, but. But my yeah, wife he, was over, still, he was over touring with his all star band like this year, wasn't he? Like until obviously they got COVID. Yeah, I mean, I've seen his all star band or one of his all star bands many times, mm. uh, not this last one, but uh, no, he's great. He, he can't help himself. I mean, although of his age, he still loves being on stage like McCarthy. Mm. They can't mm -hmm. stop him, do you know what I mean? They need yeah. one of those big books to drag him off. <laughs> I don't think that would work in all honesty. Well, I think no, been, I don't. I, I don't think so. They probably trained their neck muscles so that they can't move them. They're just like no. Nope. And, <laughs> well, and I bet you they've got some minders as well that would sort that. <laughs> Definitely. Well, there'll be like ten bodyguards around each and what we move when we say we move. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, because I always used to wind uh, when I started doing the podcast, and I uh, was winding up people that were saying like, "Oh, who would be like your number uh, one gu uh, guest?" And I was like, "Well, Ringo Starr." What? And I was like, and I would contact deliberately saying, "Right, I know you don't want to mention the Beatles, but I'm a massive Thomas fan." <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Loopholes, my friend. Yeah. Well, I, don't, still, I don't. I don't think he does much interview stuff nowadays. Nah. I mean, he just nah, I don't, and goes on. Yeah, well, he's, he's earned the right. Well, in fairness, as as of you for all the work that you've done, what well, on Thomas as well, because it was a it was a very long gig. What well, if you look at the count from the series one to series seven? What well, and you done tugs as well in between. So that was what from nineteen eight, what 
83 was when it was starting to record the 84 was released and it was in the yeah. 2000, it was in the early 2000s that it went yeah. on that when hit took over so it was a very long and prosperous career well and yeah, what it, to be fair to them they didn't really have the budget to just keep churning out series like like they do nowadays uh mm-hmm. so you know brit had to um raise the money left right and center to create these things so there was a big gap between series one and series two mm-hmm. and series three. it wasn't until about series five and six i think that they got truncated into a shorter period because i remember yeah. we were doing the music for the series and then it was we had to do six songs you know these video songs that we did yeah, uh, yeah. immediately after the series and then we were back into another series again so it was like Hmm. but it was great I mean, we really enjoyed it it was uh yeah it was, it was one thing that like for uh for our side of the pond like uh, we never really got to hear what you know like the, you know, like the little engine songs and all those kind of ones that you've done like they were mm-hmm. more like for the kind of american market we never heard as much of it over in britain well yeah. so the so the advantage of the internet now is that i was able to just stroll through that back catalog and be like right i'm listening to this and i'm listening to this and i'm listening to this but and some yeah, of the work yeah. like well, and some of the work that you've done, like just what like, even what like, on those songs alone, they're they're fantastic pieces of work. Like they're they're brilliant. No, no, we did, we really enjoyed it. It was great being able to use the kids to sing as well because yeah. Uh, um, I mean, I'm not a great singer by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, it it was a kids thing, and it was nice yeah. to have kids on it. You know, that's that's the way it is. So yeah. It, Definitely. Well, I mean, well, I heard that, heard those, and I'm like, man, I was a brilliant singer when I was a kid. Why, why couldn't, why didn't I hear about this? Why didn't I hear about? It? I be, that would have been my dream come true to sing on. That. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. Well, right, so what uh, gave you the idea to kind of do the remaster CDs and like MP3s, like, uh, like from now? Because you're up to at the time that's recording you're up to volume five, I believe. Yeah, or, volume I've six. Done five volumes um, of the theme. The reason behind it was um, a lot of these themes, no one heard, well, they heard them, but they were mixed in with the sound effects and the uh, Ringo's voice and all the rest of it. You the, you, you, never heard the um, standalone music at mm-hmm. the time. I mean, a lot of people have done it now, um, you know, done cover versions, etc. Mm-hmm. But I thought it'd be nice to, um, to re-record these things uh, and uh, so the fans could hear them without not they're not the original soundtrack because mm. the tello knows now but i mean but i can re-record them so yeah i re-recorded them as close as i could to the originals mm. um and uh and I, I just put the first cd out and then i it was so well you know uh, accepted that i thought oh this is a good idea and uh mm-hmm. i mean i don't sell millions of them but i you know it's, it's nice too it's, it's a lot of fans and i get a lot of feedback yeah so, um yeah. yeah so i carried on and i've done uh five albums now and uh, yeah. you can get them all on www.modmusic.co.uk gotta get the plug in oh of course like don't worry like your uh your details will be at the the, the black bar down there, I'll put your link and I'll put a couple of the, if it's okay to put a couple of pictures of the front covers by either sure. side so they can see what yeah. they're what Absolutely. they're talking about. Did the same with uh, uh, with Nicholas Jones as well. What it's, what it's only fair, like you guys gave us such joy what, as, mm-hmm. like, as kids. What, it's only fair that we get we give some of that back what, as a thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, really good. good. What, you. Yeah, definitely. What, and, well, obviously, I, well, kind of outside of Thomas like, and, and and Tugs as well, because you did the music on Tugs as well, which was which was quite a, a style change as well. Like, the eighties was more the kind of the synth recording kind of styles with the the effects. Tugs was more the kind of it seemed like a big band kind of style, like you know. Trump well, it was, it, it, was of, it was of the time. Everyone mm-hmm. was using synths and saxophones, so that's yeah. And we didn't want to. I mean, Thomas, the Thomas for music was kind of dated in a way, but it was it was you couldn't tie it down to any period no um, i wouldn't i wouldn't say so but the only yeah, thing i would yeah, say was like sax solos are definitely something from the 80s i always yeah. say that to people i go the 80s was a sign of the sax solo and we need sax solos back i love them so do i i love sax yeah uh, definitely it's a great instrument but you know you don't get it so often nowadays but uh i know it should make yeah, a comeback so it really should 
Yeah, absolutely. But uh, it, the thing is, though, Andrew, it does date it. Once you put a saxophone on something, it sounds like it's from the 80s. So, you mm. know, we just don't do it anymore. But, uh, yeah. No, so, uh, yeah, that was good. And that, that, that was the theory behind it all. I'll just recreate this stuff without any sound effects on them and uh, see if it goes down well. And it did. So, yeah. I'm up, I've done five volumes. Mm. And um, my daughter, who has two children, Mm. Uh, has been pestering me to do like a sing along album, which is oh, all, nice. sung by me. And I've not got a great voice, but sung <laughs> by me. So the kids can sing along with them. That's basically it. So I'm wow. just putting the final touches on that. But that won't be a CD. That will just be a digital download. And, yeah. Uh, through uh, mod music again. So, uh, but it's, it's turning out well. And uh, if you excuse the singing on it, and I don't have any kids <laughs> back in the so, uh, but it's good fun, you know, if you just want to sing along to it, that's yeah. all it's supposed to be, you know. Yeah, and fair. Well, well, you don't give your singing voice enough credit. I think it's a good it's a good singing voice. Like when I heard the, uh, well, because it's you singing on like the ones like Little Engines, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I thought that was, uh, that was really good. Well, I didn't think it was uh, like bad by any stretch of the imagination. So give yourself more yeah. credit, my friend. Like the music I is, the music's in you. you. I don't even like hear the sound of my own voice when I'm talking so when I'm singing it's even worse but you know yeah. I do get around that and uh, uh, with a bit of help from technology and yeah, um, yeah so that's that, this is going to be coming out I don't know what even I'm going to call it yet but this will be coming out in the next week or so so uh, you'll be able to listen then yeah, don't worry. As usual, you'll have uh, this loyal ginger follower that we like coming to get the, get the stuff and let and buy well, it as, as many of us I'm, will. I'm not doing it as a CD because I'm not too sure really how popular it's going to be because it's not the old thing, it's just the old song. So I'm only doing yeah. it as a digital download. I don't think mm. anyone's going to want a CD of it. If there's enough people requested, I'll get them pressed up, but not yeah. right now. Well, don't worry. Like, if you ever uh, do bring it out right here, well, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> my, like, I think well, I think it's such a shame now that CDs seem to be going like kind of out the out the way. Like the last kind of couple of cars that I've bought, but like, and like uh, they don't have CD players in them, and no. it's real and it's really gutting because what like, sometimes you just you want to stick a CD in and just listen to it and like, listen to the songs and just go over it again. So my yeah. wife, like when she bought her car, like she deliberately went for an older model, and the specific point was I want a CD player. Yeah, <laughs> what, what, which worked out great for us because then we could play your CDs in the car to our kids, what, and, it car and it carries it. on. So it's fantastic. What, and by, uh, by the time this go out, goes out, we'll be on our way down to Hull for our holidays, letting to see her family. So that'll be in the car getting played over and over again. <laughs> you must get bored with it in the end. Not at all. No. I don't. I definitely don't. I love listening to what, all the music. What, what, because. I, I know you said that sometimes, like you know, we didn't hear what there would be like the you know the the engines on the screen. There would be Ringo's voice as well, what, and then the music, and maybe it wouldn't listen to it. But I always loved listening to the music. I always found that any type of show you do, it's an immersive experience. If you take the music mm. out of the show, it's not the same. Like if you took Ringo's voice out of it, it's not the same. What well, part of it is the whole collaborative collective experience. The music is such an integral part of setting the scenes, setting the tone. Well, of how you're going to uh, establish the show in the series as a whole, so I always loved listening to the music. Well, it was it was fantastic. It can make you make, music makes you feel so many emotions in the space of like four four and a half minutes. Uh, yeah, the Tux music we decided to take a different view on it totally. So we didn't want to give each character their own theme. Uh, it was just a, a general kind of music track, um, which I you know it worked well. It was more cinema cinematographic music than Thomas was, you know what I mean? It was uh, mm -hmm. more of a score. But yeah, definitely. Episode, I mean, you didn't get the time with Thomas. It was only five minutes long. Mm -hmm. Very difficult to create a soundtrack to it um, because it was just all themes and a bit of incidental thrown in and then you mm -hmm. were finished. Yeah. So the Tugs thing, we, we could take a bit longer on it. They were, I think they ended up, with, we, we did them at 20 minutes, but I think they ended up mm -hmm. at 50. Yeah, like from uh, from what I'd kind of research, like there were like originally thirty minute long episodes, and then they were trimmed yeah. down to twenty, and then they were yeah. trimmed out to fifteen again. Yeah. But it was it definitely gave you a lot more range to play with. It made it more grandiose. What like I felt, yeah. but in what well, uh, it was like, just it was absolutely fantastic. Again, as I was like saying, what like, it what like, music always 
helps set the scene with any type of like, experience, any type of collaboration when it comes to that. Like, if you don't have the music part of it, like, or at least for me anyway, that part of your emotions like maybe isn't twigging as much. You can be taken in by like, you know, the big explosions and the big effects. Like, that's obviously part of it. But the music really, for me, it, it hits you right in your soul. Like, and I think it's yeah, something yeah. Only, only kind of fellow musicians understand. I but, totally agree. I mean, I, my one of my heroes is John Williams, you know, or yeah. you know, Spielberg stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think his music is just, it's, I mean, can you imagine George without... Do you know what I mean? It would be nothing, would it? Yeah, it's, it would uh, just, it would just, they would just be okay, like, what's this weird rubber shark just staying floating <laughs> in the water? Well, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, you don't have, if the, well, it's, again, something so simple what, or, or perceived as simple, obviously, yeah. what, but it sets a scene so well. What, and again, like John Williams, like you think of the, like the Empire steam in Star Wars, because I'm also a big, anything that involves Star in it, I'm like, woohoo! Yeah. So, yeah, so, so, yeah. so, so Star Tots was obviously brilliant for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but you have that you have that empire uh, empire music dun, 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 and you're like yeah. it just sounds like you it's like oh it's about to go down yeah <laughs> absolutely but, yeah no he, he's a genius for doing all that and mm -hmm. i can't think of any score that i didn't absolutely love a piece i, I thought they were all amazing you know, but, um, mm. But what would you say was like uh, if you had like the opportunity to go back and be like right i can i could be involved in any other type of like project like obviously we're keeping you with Thomas in this reality in, e in every reality because it's not the same without you but if you had the chance to go like to like be what work with like a composer or be a part of another project what would you say would be like your number one choice uh I don't, we got kind of um not sidetracked but we've got pigeonholed into doing kid stuff you know we never mm. really got the opportunity to leave that behind and go into something else so it was always kid stuff for us and uh, mm. uh so there wasn't really any amazing projects that i can think of i mean thomas was a one-off i mean mm. they kept trying to give it awards but there was no category for it because it was it wasn't stop frame animation or cartoon or any of that mm. it was uh, live action in fact yeah. but, it didn't have, but it didn't have people in it so it we never did get, I don't think they ever got a BAFTA for it or one of those. And it, I think it was primarily because they didn't have the um, category for it, which was a mm. bit of a shame, but never. Yep. The crime, the crime of the century, my friend. Absolutely. Definitely. As long as Def the kids liked it, that was the main thing. Mm. Yeah, well, the kids absolutely loved it. I mean, what? Uh, and it's great because music doesn't matter the generation, like, you can always go back to it. Like, there's a reason why like, the Beatles are still loved by, like, like people Absolutely. that are just grow, that are growing up like three generations behind them and didn't like, yeah. don't even have a clue. Well, there's yeah, people that no, don't, well, they'll I'm, always they'll always sell records to people. So, I mean, the, the catalog. I saw McCartney on Glastonbury, mm -hmm. and um, you know what a catalog of songs he can do, and uh, just unbelievable. And they still stand up today. You know, definitely. Like, it, yeah, no, go on. I uh, just say like uh, like you listen to some of the stuff from back then like you know the Beatles when he was with Wings and his own original stuff as well what like, it's it, it's better than what like, some of the stuff that's getting churned out today like I listen to some stuff I'm like oh my goodness like, I, I've yeah. definitely hit, I've hit my I've hit my midlife like this yeah. is, the children are wrong like, yeah. like, br like bring it back bring it back <laughs> there's some good stuff but I don't think there's anything that stands out like the Beatles did I mean it really no. was you know the songwriting capability Obviously, not so much in the very, very early days, but I mean, once they got established and got moving, you know, they really did, you know, grab it and and, mm -hmm. and really worked at it. They didn't, uh, it didn't just didn't happen. You know what I mean? It yeah. was, a, yeah. it was a, a long, hard slog. And good luck to them. I'm glad I was around when they were around. That was all. Yeah, no, definitely. It's a lot of things that can be that. In my case, I'm very envious of, like, uh, you know. It, but when everybody says like oh what would you want to have been around in and i'm like i would have wanted to have been like around the 50s and 60s like you get elvis the rise of rock and roll the beatles yeah. sending it into the stratosphere but the sitwa then there's like the 70s you've got obviously your david bowie's like rolling stones were getting more of their prominence because they were always kind of in the beatles shadow i think in the 60s like at the mm -hmm. start and then what well, then when you're in the 80s gets yeah, the 80s <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, but, we got, but, we, but we got Thomas, so I'm yeah, gonna, you got Thomas. Yeah, I mean, here we I, go. <laughs> I didn't really like the uh punk era that much, I thought it was just mm. it was boring, you know. You want to see people throwing beer all over the crowd, you know, it didn't really mm. do it for me, but then again, you know, I was a, I was a previous generation, if you like, so I still, yeah, mm. yeah, it's like we had the uh, like, like punk music, I'm I'm the music I'm fine with, but, but the antics around it, I was like. Really, we don't really need yeah, to. Yeah, they that. were just trying to shock, you know. That, that's Aye. what it's all about, you know. Yeah, well, it's the, it, it was the it was the anarchism of like the the revolution and all that kind of stuff, as they said like, back yeah. then. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, but everybody has that kind of thing about them. Like the Beatles that were 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 anarchistic in their in their own way because no one had heard that type of sound or that type of style before. And what well, it's what well, and so it was seen as oh, that's a that's a bit of a risk with that type of music. And then you listen to it generations later and go. It was a big deal. Yeah, no, it was. I mean, it, it took the rock and roll thing, you know, Little Richard and all the rest of them, and and then the Beatles kind of followed all that because they they were fans of Little Richard, etc. But mm. they did their own like Northern twist on it. It was a real live band, you know that. Yeah, that's the yeah. difference. You know, it wasn't uh, wasn't orchestral in any way. It was just mm. you know, great. Stuff. Or, or what it's like though, it's like come see my laptop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, uh, okay. uh, I, I do miss live bands, you know. I think mm -hmm. they were all, I mean, some of them were awful. I had a couple of terrible bands, but <laughs> it was great, you know. You go along to these church halls and plug all your gear in, and you know, you know they weren't fans, they were just people dancing to it. Was great. Mm. It was you ever nice. plan? Uh, you plan to get in a band together and touring at any point? No, no, I'm a, I'm a, I, I don't really like these dad's bands or granddad bands as they call them nowadays. <laughs> You know, I'm not a good voice to begin with now. I'm finished with all that now, but uh, I really, really, really enjoyed it at the time. It was brilliant. Mm. Great. Uh, fantastic. Well, and, mm. well, so what would you say was kind of like, if you had to pick like your instrument, well, uh, like the main one for you, what would you say was your like number one instrument that you'd love to play and you would just play like kind of all day? Uh, I suppose it's piano, stroke guitar, anything like that. I mean, I used to play bass in the band, but they, they were in the day, and I played drums in the band once because the drummer never turned up. It was one of those things, you know, what can you play? Well, I can play anything. So that's yep. good, but I mean, you gave it a go, you know. Yeah, but I think definitely. piano, piano and guitar, and then bass, that's it. Mm. Good choices, definitely good choices. Absolutely, well, I mean, you always get invited to parties if you can play piano. Oh, definitely. Well, yeah. no matter what, no matter what you could play, really, what, and it was the yeah. same deal. I, I was, they were always like, Andrew, sing another song, and I'm like, do I have to? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, my voice is breaking, guys. I'm not as good as I used to be. <laughs> yeah, I need another drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Back in the day, back in the days when I did drink, what? Then it was just like, nah, just not for me. But yeah. I could, what? I always say that people are like, I'm, I'm this crazy without alcohol. Imagine what it was like if I was back on it. <laughs> but Mike, I've I've just enjoyed talking with you so much. Like you're such a you're such a gentleman. You're such a great guy. What and oh, what? I really it's a pleasure talking to you as well, Andrew. It's nice. Yeah. And, uh... oh, thank you so much. Like, so give it give it another plug, my friends. Like, tell them where they can find you. Like all the the websites, the socials. If you have any, like sell it, my friend. Sell it. I do. I have. Well, my website's uh, uk. <laughs> Uh, I've got a Twitter account, and uh, it's at Mike O'Donnell 5, I think. I never look at the address on that, but you mm. can find it anyway. Mm. And, um, yeah, I, I, I'm around and available, as they say. So uh, yeah. I'm still enjoying working, so that's the main thing. Yeah. And look after this vocal album, which will be coming out soon. Yeah, well, definitely looking forward to that. And one thing that I will say that I was really, really happy about when you done the, uh, like the remaster of Thomas, you finally got round to Donald and Douglas. I did. It took me a while because yeah. it was difficult. You know, those bagpipes aren't easy to play and mm. not easy to listen to either. Sorry, I know you're a Scot, but uh... it's all it's all right. I mean, I, I had bagpipes at my wedding. What and now just it's <laughs> what it's something. What it's something that we it's it's uniquely Scottish. What you have to definitely Absolutely. what and what when we finally got the Donald and Douglas ones, I was like, yes. That's a good yes, one. Yes, I, yeah, I was so happy. I, was like, and I, I loved uh, uh, Ringo dearly. Like, and he's, he, he wasn't the worst at a Scottish narration when you heard ones like, <laughs> well, again, yeah. no, disres no disrespect to George Carlin, but my God, that was horrible. Yeah, uh, I, I was, have tried it. 
Uh, but the worst part is like uh, what we all do, like in narrations like, of our own, like Thomas episodes and stuff like that, and even being Scottish, you still go into the dinner fish yourself, Thomas. <laughs> we'll soon have you back on the rails. And you're like, you're like, I'm Scottish. I sure. have the voice, and I'm still doing that impersonation. <laughs> I know it's amazing. Isn't it? You got to do it, but I mean that. Uh, yeah, it's no, like, no, like, one can, no one can do it like the Scots. That's for sure. Yeah, it's like it's like when uh, whenever I would act, because like, when I was a kid, I would always act the, the stories out because I watched them like you know all the time. And it's like yeah. and, uh, well, and I would do the accents as well, and I would always love doing break fan because it'd be like it was like you're a muckle nuisance to leave you behind. And like, you can't. I'm essential. I can't, you? you know what? And my mum and dad would just kill themselves laughing, just watch it. They were yeah. like, he's going to be in the arts. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> but he's, he's, yeah. he's got that about him. What? And yeah. What I remember um, I, when I was working at Ringo Studio, mm. uh, and he did, the, he, did his, he did his narration in his own studio, obviously. So Brett Kendall. Yeah. And I engineered it for them, and because um, he likes having people around that he knows. You know? mm. So, uh, but it was amazing because we had these scripts, and uh, you know, the Donald and Doug, and Ringo's looking and saying, "What is this wish and all that stuff?" Because you know? <laughs> when you've actually got it written down, it's kind of he looks weirder. So, mm. uh, I, Brit has to give a good briefing for him of how to take it, and she wasn't very good at it. So that's how it is. <laughs> Is everyone taking potluck? You know what I mean. I mean, in fairness, like when, when my boys, they were uh, when they were born, they were ten weeks premature, so they spent six weeks in the hospital. And I read them the railway series stories when they were in their incubators and stuff. When I go and see them, and when I got to the twi- and when I got to the twin inches book, even I was like, "Oh God, here we go." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, it was fat. It was fantastic. What and what? I don't know if you'll be allowed to say this, but I'm still going to ask it. Did you do any like, uh, music recordings for the missing coach? Uh, no, I, I don't oh. remember. I don't, I don't know what <laughs> happened. To I, I, I vaguely remember an episode arriving and then it was taken back. You know, something I don't know what happened because that yeah. was all political for some strange reason. But yeah, we never yeah. actually got the story. Oh man, well, it would have been brilliant. Like, he's seen like some of those like still images released and things like that. Like, that that sent the Thomas fandom and the like nerd fanner. Well, mm. myself, myself included, what like, is I mean, I can understand why it wasn't adapted, like, I get it, but like, if that was the one thing I said, well, I would discuss with my Thomas friends, I was like, if there's one thing you'd go back in time and say, like, to, to them back in the day, what would you say to them? What well, some of them were like, you know, be careful with Thomas and the Magic Railroads and stuff like that. And I'm like, no, 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 no don't, don't do that. Like, go back and say, just make the missing coach, yeah, don't, don't, <laughs> what, don't release it, bring it out in 30 years. And yeah. we're all, and you will hit even more money. It's Nerdvarna for us. It was fantastic. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, now I don't think that's going to happen. Now I'm afraid. I think um, mm. Mattel have steered Thomas onto a different track. <laughs> Get it? Mm. Yeah, and, uh, but, but good puns. I like a pun. Absolutely, and it's. Uh, but I think it's hit the buffers as far as I'm concerned. Uh, hey, it's, another pun. Yes, another one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, I, I, it's never going to go back to the old ways because it's too expensive mm. to do. I mean, mm. making the Thomas stuff back then um, was very expensive. Oh, uh, well, you're talking about like the stuff with Mattel, what as well. What, it's what a lot. Also, a lot of the fans have been kind of what you know nerd rage over it, what which is kind of understandable. But I always wanted to know, like, from kind of your side, from doing the original stuff and like doing like being part of the original Thomas like, creation. What are your yeah. thoughts on it? Um, I mean, these big corporations, uh, you know, need to sell lunch boxes and things like that. They, and they needed to relaunch Thomas. Um, I don't think they realised what they had in the original series, but, you know, poor old Dave Mitten retired. Britt certainly retired. I think Junior's retired now as well. Mm. Um, so they're never going to recreate the old series. It wouldn't be the same anyway. Um, mm. The new stuff, I mean, a five-year-old doesn't have a point of reference, so they don't look at the old stuff. I wish it was like the old stuff. Mm. It doesn't mean anything to them. The new stuff's fine for the new audience. And, uh, and it, it, I suppose in a way it does keep Thomas going, you know, so mm. the name Thomas Benton. Personally, it's not for me, but um, uh, listen, it's to his own. Some people are like it. 
Yeah, yeah. But don't worry. Like, there's there's plenty of our gener like my generation as well that that take my kids and go sit down, boys. I have a story yeah. to tell you. And it's a, and it's a, well, and that was, there was a, there was an infamous picture uh, that my wife took and it was uh, the boys in the wee kind of rocking chairs what, yeah. when they were, say, about nine months old and me, what, sitting in between them and we're all watching Thomas and Gordon. Brilliant. That was serious. What, and I, what, my wife had put it up. She was like, who's the big kid here? <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, because you just seen what she was just like, what she's like, I love the picture because just the smile on your face. What you, yeah. cause at that point, I'd had a, a bit of a blip on my mental health and I wasn't, hadn't been doing too good. And she was like, just seeing that smile back, the smile that what she, that she fell in love with, she was like, that was, it was just fantastic. What, yeah. what seeing you and our kids all glued to the TV watching Thomas and just all smiles fantastic. on your faces. Fantastic. What, we what, get a lot of, um, I get a lot of fan mail from, uh, uh, people with autism it's always been a big thing Thomas mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's the colours or the music or I don't know what it is but it's mm. so popular with uh, people uh, with that problem and it's uh, yeah. they just yeah. absolutely love it you know and it's just great you know it's fantastic yeah. Long well, I, th I think personally what well, um, well, I always say that I've always got, had like a wee kind of undiagnosed version of autism but uh, well, for me like the whole what well, the reason I loved it was it made me feel safe and it made me feel like uh what what it felt really lovely to me what and it was it was a place you felt like you could visit in real life yeah. as well it was so kind so friendly like you say there was lots of like vibrancy about it what well, and well I think that's probably what gravitates to people what well, it was it wasn't like the story what the the shows at the time they were all very like lively action packed and there had to be like there was barely any story but there was a lot of lights and ah yeah like, but whereas... like, uh, yeah but i mean you know brit was very clever the way she did it and mm. um there was always a good moral to each story although she didn't write the original ones but it's the same thing and um yeah there was still yeah she still adapted them what and yeah yeah, what... yeah yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. But, uh no it, it's 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 great and of course this this autistic spectrum they call it don't they i mean mm -hmm. it goes from very mild to quite severe so i mean yeah. it's it's just the way it is and uh and i'm so happy that um the audience was as diverse as it was you know and it captured loads of people's imagination fantastic love it mm -hmm. love it, it very yeah, proud really to have been part of it actually yeah and well i can speak for uh, i'm pretty sure i speak for many a thomas fan that we are so glad that you were a part of it what, yeah, was, no. what what because uh, I, I always felt like it was like this having this little, it was like a wee collective of people, like people with, with the same vision and all these like, special skills that, you know, where you get like that lightning in a bottle effect, you're like, mm. you don't know, you don't know how long this is going to last, but you get it and it's going to be great like, and it'll, like, it'll just burn bright. And that's what those series were for us. Yeah, like, we no, it's, it was very well um received and, and and deservedly so i think it was mm -hmm. uh, it was different you know so, yeah. i mean like nowadays a lot of american stuff that's like really what i would call brash music i mean it's it's wham bam and all that which is great you know it's fine but uh, mm -hmm. you know have the opposite end as well which what thomas was thomas mm -hmm. was very gentle really in a lot of ways although dave mitten used to love crashing the engines together which you're not allowed to do anymore mm -hmm. uh, but uh, he had a great time doing it, and uh, and so did we. We really yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, and it is. It's like you say the like the wham bam style is because like you know attention spans have what like, shortened as well. Like mm -hmm. you know, it's like it's like get the instant hook within the seven seconds, or that's you, you're done, and you're like yeah. But yeah. on the other side of it, there's people that like that gives them a sensory overload, and that's probably why like, another reason why a lot of autistic like, uh, people like, uh, gravitate to it. Like a lot of wham bam music like really intense it's 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 very overloading for them and they can't they can't take it in they can't what well, uh, it's it's too much whereas yeah. the like the slightly slower style and the more peaceful style of thomas what well, is great it calms a tr it calms a really troubled mind and it was one of the reasons that i loved it because well even even now like if i'm what well, because i still struggle with my mental health if i have a bad day what well, and and what I'm not feeling my best. One of the things that I love to do, and I know it will break me back out, is putting on the classic Thomas, like the like, uh, series one or two, what, and just sitting and just watching it, and it makes me feel so calm and so mm. what, at ease again. What, so for my own mental health, I personally say thank you so much for it because what, it's, it's, it helped me through it. It helped me through I'm a lot of dark times. 
Yeah, I'm so pleased it did for you and uh, as it does for, for a lot of people. And I think, you know, the other thing is music used to start off, you know, orchestral and quite slow and, and mm -hmm. the rest of it. And also, but visually, there wasn't really fast cuts ever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There was kind of long, especially on series three, there were long shots of these engines coming through mm -hmm. the night mist and all the rest of it. Uh, flying Kipper, was that series three? Oh, or series three? Flying Kipper was series one. Well, that was the that was like that's the one that like, everybody says is one of the best episodes of all time because it showed you what uh, what it was going to be kind of going forward with the hype with you know what uh, hindsight and then series yeah. three you had a lot of the tracking shots as well. Like I always loved uh, ones like in you know like Oliver owns up and things like that where oh, you're yeah. seeing you're seeing those shots that like the yard it looks so busy it gets so workman but series two was very workman like series three had the more kind of tracking where it, it made it feel really real what, mm. and what, and it was it was just it was amazing I mean I could wax lyrical about it what, yeah, a lot and I do what, in fairness. <laughs> But, no, but, but it's it, you know it progressed really well over the years as well. We, when you think mm -hmm. of series one, it was we were all feeling our way. You know, series mm -hmm. two and series three and series four, in fact, really mm -hmm. progressed. And also, they invented different musical instruments. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. Sam samples and things like that. So it was a lot more um, orchestral sound. It wasn't an orchestra because mm -hmm. you couldn't afford it. But I mean, and time wise, it would have been a nightmare. But I mean. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was, it was, you know, all, all that added to, and, and of course the cinematography in it as well. They had that mm -hmm. camera that used to come right down onto the track. Yeah. And um, that was really uh, new groundbreaking stuff, mm -hmm. especially for kids, you know, programs. Yeah. But, um, it all kind of fell into place, which is what it's all about, really. Yeah. And then with the music style, when you get to see these five, what? That's John Williams' like, inspired stuff right there for kids. <laughs> but well, I mean, what? Well, because I was, well, I was only kind of series one to four, and then you get that stereotype of Thomas is for babies. You shouldn't be watching it, so you put it by. And then when I got a bit older, I went back into it. And when I went to series five, I actually my first thought was, is this Thomas or Die Hard? <laughs> yeah, because it was so dramatic. What? What? Like, and oh, again, the music adds to the drama. What? Like, yeah. And. I was like, wow, this is, this is amazing. It was amazing. It was fantastic. Some of the scores you came up with, like for, yeah. uh, like for Cranky Bugs, Bugs, Toby and the Flood, when it's really the dramatic, like the ship crashing in, Toby's basically yeah. going to die in a waterfall. And I'm like, yeah. wow, this is crazy. <laughs> I know. And well, then it's amazing. Really because, it. Yeah, Britain David used to give us or provide us with the films, obviously. And yeah. it's the yeah. first time we'd seen them. And it was like, well, you know, can you do this? And we'd say, yeah, absolutely. It was kind of a challenge, you know, because everything was getting bigger and more dramatic. And um, yeah, because they could, you know, that's the, the technology mm -hmm. was enabling it. That's, you know, great stuff. Yeah. And it was one of those things that whenever somebody says to me, oh, it was a kid's show, I go, right, I watched series five and I was 21. <laughs> and I was, what? Well, and I was like, wow, this is fantastic. What? Well, so, yeah. You're never, you're never too old for Tom. That's the thing. Definitely not. Definitely not. Well, David, I know you're you're a, a very busy man. You've got to go and get your and get your pint. You're very well. You've you've earned it. And you've... Well, I'm not drinking at eleven o'clock in the morning. I've just got something oh. else I've got to do before. I... <laughs> right. Well, just just take inspiration from Donald and Douglas. They, if they were humans, they'd be drinking at eleven. That's oh, what they, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They they would be down there. What uh, down there doing for it? What like, yes? Give <laughs> a pint of Terence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah that'd be great yeah definitely it's been fantastic to speak to you mike thank you so much it's it's, it's, not, it's it's really made my day it's not a problem and you can edit all this together can you and take oh, oh definitely what uh, what uh any any of the wee bits like where, where for anybody listening like when my kids kicked the wi-fi and i was ready to shoot them and it cut out. <laughs> it <was> like, <laughs> well, I'll, well i can add, i can take those bits out and add them in but it's always good problem. Keeps yeah, it keeps absolutely. it keeps it real as they say. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you, Andrew, as well. It really has. Thank you so much, Mike. Well, I've I've um, thoroughly enjoyed it. I wish you the best of luck with your ongoing mental thing. I hope it's not too much of a problem for you for the rest of your life. But mm. you know, you've got to stay strong. That's the thing, and uh, yep. that's what it's all about. Watch more Thomas. That's the plan. Well, yep. I just keep I just keep watching Thomas and creating stuff about Thomas. It makes Good me night. happy. Good night. Right. Well, well, until next time, my faithful followers, take care.
Stay safe. And you. And listen, if you need any pickups or anything, just give me an email. And I'll do. Don't you. worry. I will do. Well, you've not had the last of this mental ginger just yet. <laughs> Thanks very much, Andrew. Yeah. Thank you for your time, mate. Bye bye. See you later. Okay. Bye bye.